So uh, this film is a very, really, very, very sweet film um, about a closeted gay man living in the 70s uh, who goes home for uh, to a Southern family. Um, but there's also this very sweet love story and then also a very sweet um, coming of age story between not only um, Paul's uh, Uncle Frank, but um, Sophia, your, your character as well, Beth. Um, can you uh, talk to me a bit about uh, what you hope people take away from your relationship with uh, Uncle Paul or your character's relationship with Uncle Paul? Uh, well, uh, the thing about her relationship between her and her uncle, it's, it's she uh, looks up to him because he's the one person that talks to her uh, like an adult um, and actually, you know, believes that she can do something more uh, than just, you know, be there st stuck in, you know, South Carolina and she wants to like learn and read books and go to NYU and go to, you know, go to college and have something for herself. And um, she feels like her, her play, she doesn't really belong where she, uh, where she is right now. And he believes that she could do that. And with that, he, she becomes, he becomes her mentor. And, um, and, but then as she, you know, gets to know him better and goes on this road trip, she becomes more confident in herself and becomes her own person, not Uncle Frank, but her own, uh, a better version of herself and towards the end she helps him um um and you know uh, with his fears coming out to his family and become being her himself just by you know saying the same thing that he told her when she was a kid and that relationship is just it's something really strong and powerful and there's going to be someone in your life who always helps you um and just uh remember that you are your own person and um you can it with with you know just be be more confident in yourself because you you can't change who you are um if just if you you know just you know be who you are and do what you want do what you love and soon enough you can help others and be a mentor to other people um because people they need it <laughs> <laughs> the film is is I mean, obviously there's a gay storyline, but the film is really about trauma and how past trauma can affect us from moving forward. Paul, um, talk to me a bit about how you prepared for this character and um, you, you go into some pretty dark places. So so talk to me about your, your preparation for that. You know, Alan and I have really very, we have a couple of really similar stories. And one is um, the loss of, a sibling uh, that you feel uh, so somehow responsible for. And, it, you know, he's talked about it and I've talked about it and we talk about it. It's peculiar how we talk about it in exactly the same way, which is that it is a scar from which you will never quite uh, uh, heal, you know? And his sister died in an automobile accident. My brother, fell from a building, I taught him how to climb. And you tend to recognize those people when you bump into them that have somehow managed <laughs> to cling on to the cliff edge and not, <laughs> not just let go, <laughs> you know. Exactly. <laughs> lots of times where I've kind of been left like one, one, one arm, you know. But, um, so, so I think we sort of really, uh, we, we found each other, recognized each other, and uh, I, I certainly fell in love with him from the first phone call that I had. And um, it is, it's about, you know, it's about survival and acceptance of who you are and, and an acceptance of what you've done and acceptance of what has happened to you. And, and this is, <laughs> you know, you're, you're um, you're mostly out of options. <laughs> you, don't, you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like so so um, so. Yes, it, it is. It is a it, it is a film about. Uh, I like to think of it right now as especially as the time that they that they are choosing to Amazon is choosing to release this movie. It's really a, a family that have that has 
incredibly different uh, ideas about how one should live one's life, but that they managed to overcome their sort of differences and their, these obstacles and, 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 and find a way to coexist and, um, and be authentic with each other. Alan pointed out this really lovely thing that at the end of the movie, there are, <laughs> there, there are, there are people that, that, that we've seen that are not going to be okay with Uncle, uh, with, with Frank being who he is, but they're still there at the end of the movie, you know, right. having, drinking tea, you know, you know, iced tea out, you know, in the garden. Though it is kind of about his reckoning and his identity uh, and trauma and kind of getting past his uh, father's to toxic masculinity, um, you have this theme of resiliency and how strong women can kind of surprise you and you two uh, play some of those strong women. Um, who were your own inspirations uh, for the characters, Avant, Butch, uh, Lois, who you play, and Kitty, Judy, um, who you play? I was really pleased that Alan telling me something about the um, um, his grandmother, his aunt, who were the um, inspirations and models for Aunt Butch, or at least in some sense. Um, and of course, once you begin thinking that way, I think of uh, my relationship with aunts when I was a little girl, because he talked about the experience of being young and looking in the, at this sort of formidable character. Um, it, it, it's, it's part of the whole warp and woof of the movie, that the relationships uh, horizontally, vertically, with and without any real understanding of the other. So. That's awesome. And Judy, uh, for you, this is the second kitty you've played, by the way, so. <laughs> Actually, it's the third. Oh, the third! I was Kitty in the Village, an M. Night Shyamalan movie, several years ago. <laughs> That's the one I've forgotten. I, yeah. I, the rest I had a feeling you, I was like, I know she's thinking of Kitty Sanchez. Yes, but I, um, <laughs> I was another Kitty, too. Um, sorry, what was your question? Yes, how does it feel to play my second Kitty? No, um, no, no, my question was like, what was your inspiration? Oh, right. Yeah, I kitty? was, um, you know, I... I I was sort of inspired by um, all the the in laws and my my mother's my maternal extended family. Um, the the Greer clan is is a big one, and um, and then you know all everyone sort of brings someone into it, and it gets bigger and bigger. And you know as time goes on, like it's interesting to be you know like to be an you're like in the family, but you're always going to be like. A little bit of an outsider and so I was sort of inspired by that as thinking that this this kitty is a his, she's an in-law she's married to um Frank's brother uh played by Steve Zahn who's a genius um <laughs> and uh and that feeling of like knowing these people but always sort of feeling like there's a, the part of you that doesn't know all the secrets right right I like that um Lois, I know that you uh, worked with director Alan Ball on uh, True Blood. Um, how did he approach you for this? And then Judy also, uh, how did you get involved in the project? Oh, well, he wrote and asked me to do it. And, uh, <laughs> easy. Uh, easy as that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> easy to say yes. <laughs> my, um, yeah, my, my email came, I think, through my agent um, and and I read the script and fell in love with it. And, and I said, I love it. And he said, well, Alan would love to take you to lunch and talk about it, which we did. And we talked forever and ever and ever. We like closed the lunch portion of the day around us. And I just fell in love with him. And when he explained to me that the story was based on his own life and, and members of his own family, I, I just, uh, yeah, I had to do it. <laughs> Peter, you're kind of the heart and soul of this film, I think, a little bit, even though it is called Uncle Frank. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you got into playing a character so open and giving and loving and just receptive to the world around him. Oh, the role was offered to me, so that's how. <laughs> well, I know why, but yeah. <laughs> how did you get in that head? Uh, 
Well, you know, it was really, really kind of uh, unprecedented and very nice because I always play characters that are who are tormented and broody and whatever, you know, intense and stuff like that. So for, for a character like that to uh, to be offered to me was really a, a nice treat because I could show that side that nobody believes I have, first of all, as an actor. And as light and positive and the sunshine he is, it was not that easy to grab his soul and heart. It, it, it took me a little bit, a little bit to to sort of get him. Uh, but you know, working with all the other actors and consulting with Alan and doing my own research about Islam and being from Saudi Arabia and uh, you know all that stuff that you have to do as an actor, sort of you put the pieces together and then all of a sudden, and oh, I forgot to tell you, my inspiration was my poodle, my dog, because he's always there for I me. I saw a dog today that was very, very cute, exactly. Alex's dog. <laughs> like, I'm here, whatever you want to ask me. And I was like, you know, it sort of struck me like that Wally is a bit of a golden retriever in a way, you know, he's, or a black lab, I should say, because he's just always there for Frank, no matter what. I mean, the loyalty is so intense. And uh, it shows that they've been together for a long time and they've gone through a lot of uh, stuff and crap together. So I hope I answered your question. Uh, you completely did. Uh, okay. You completely did. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for meeting with me. I hope the rest of your day is easy breezy. <laughs> okay, Cortland, take it easy. <laughs> Bye. So, Alan, uh, you're the director of this, mm -hmm. this little film. Um, and you based like bips and bobs of it uh, from your childhood um, and then also from family stories that you heard uh, growing mm -hmm. up. Um, what were some of your visual inspirations uh, for, for this film? So, Alan, uh, you're the director of this, mm -hmm. this little film. Um, and you based like bips and bobs of it uh, from your childhood um, and then also from family stories that you heard uh, growing mm -hmm. up. Um, what were some of your visual inspirations uh, for, for this film? Uh, visual inspirations. I worked with a really amazingly gifted cinematographer named Khalid Motaseb. And uh, I think one of the things that we tried, we wanted to make a movie that looked like it might have been shot in the 1970s. Um, and one of the directors that uh, was a real influence on me, I, can't, I, I grew up during the 70s, I was in high school and during the 70s. So I was a big fan of Robert Altman. Mm -hmm. um, and I think of movies like uh, Thieves Like Us, uh, McCabe and Mrs. Miller, even Nashville. Um, I just really loved the visual style. And we wanted to make a movie that looked like it may have been shot in the 70s. And, uh, and we actually used antique lenses that were mostly used in the 70s to, oh, wow. so that our movie didn't just look like one of those period movies that looked completely pristine and perfect digitally. Right. Um, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. 